What's up everyone, this is Shark talking and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be running Alnus Raid Stage. Alnus has 300 billion HP, so everyone needs to help defeat Alnus as soon as possible. We have four different raid bosses and in order to receive the 5,000 jewels as reward, we need to defeat all of them. So he is the easiest one and there are plenty of strategies and he's weak to three different damage types. But we need to understand something about him. He counters direct attacks with self immolation, a fire damage uh, counter attack. You need to bring blunt and fire resistance to this fight. And even if it's a raid stage, you need to think about defenses. And another thing is that to get all the rewards, you only need 700,000 score. But you can do way more than that to help defeat the boss as soon as possible. So reaching uh, 10 turns is okay this time. There's four bosses, so let's help each other. So the equipments that can increase fire resistance are plenty, and some of your characters that have lower sustain should equip them. Like I have Jane Yu with uh, fire resistance, Yun Zin and some other characters as well. Claudia's not needed because she has self-healing. But let's talk about these characters. I have Tiger's information that decreases damage and also increases your will. That will help because this boss can also inflict some status elements. And getting higher, we will decrease the damage from spells. I have Golden Ball here on the front. There's plenty of AoE spells and skills. And Golden Ball will help with her all GUI endurance buff to the party. Not only that, she can also self heal and heal the party with have some more. This is pretty strong for this fight. Then I have the UDX, sorry, Global X Yunzin. She is useful because we can just use Shield and Ring of Life uh, in the cycle. Increase Ice Sky Lantern to 12, she will just keep using Shield, and when you need, she will use Ring of Life once. It's enough to get you to 10 turns. Then we have Claudia, she just starts with Reveritary Shot from her UDX style and then keeps using Healing Arrow. She heals so much that she doesn't die in this fight, as long as you have Sustain. There's Fornius, and Fornius is not used as a counter unit here. If you have his human version, inherit that as skill number 3 here, and leave Tidal Lord on 11, so that he will only use the Nuke attack instead of Tidal Lord. It's good because Fornius has plenty of endurance and also self buffs and self heals, so very strong in this fight. With that, we also have Jamil, and he's pretty strong here because he self buffs and uses an attack that's indirect. Extras is indirect and he follows up with Rogue Pierce twice. So, a very strong squad that can do 1.5 million damage. Let's see. Okay, the battle started. This boss does have plenty of accuracy, so I prefer to go with a self sustain, self buff strategy instead of trying to evade. There are some ways to evade, but there's some other problems. If you debuff Alnus too much, he would just use the fight weakness, like all raid bosses here. So, buffing yourself seems to be the better strategy. Jamie was in the back because he's the only one that takes more damage compared to the other characters. But he's also doing a lot of damage with Roll Pierce and self buffs to Dex routine. Shu is not actually so useful here, but I'm only using Yunzini because of Rain of Life. Uh, this formation works pretty well because it decreases incoming damage and also buffs your will. This boss can inflict status elements to you. And only that, plenty of the spells do high damage, so we can. Decrease the incoming damage from then with this formation. Claudia will just stay alive all the time with that healing that she performs here. It's amazing. See, because we debuffed him on turn 1, on turn 3 he's already using the fire weakness. If you keep the buffing, he will just use the fire weakness every turn, negating the effects of your debuff. So that's a very good strategy to just buff yourself instead. We just we don't have that many options, especially options that work on auto. But this one works pretty fine, and this attack that he uses at Gaze is very strong if you are using the wrong formation. But here, it's not doing so much damage because we are buffing Endurance sweet Golden Ball. As you can see here, damage is doing well since Claudia, Fornius, uh, Yunzin and JMU self buffs. Those characters are pretty good for long fights. The Fire Weakness again, they keep using that. And on Alto we can only use one Ring of Life, so... Hopefully it's uh, had on the fight, not on the start. You can get better in G sometimes, and you see we got affected with sleep. It helps uh, if you can just get this cleans it, but I'm playing on auto.
You can also use accessories to decrease the chance of being inflicted. I didn't bring them. I should have. But I only lost one turn of damage with Jamu. See, we are also healing all the time with this uh, skill from Golden Ball. Even though it's a very low amount of healing, it helps. It helps to just get your Yundin to heal later. We have three more turns and hopefully it's enough to get to 1.5 medium. Sometimes when they get 1.5 medium, depends on RNG, but you always get close. And that certainly helps reaching as max as possible to kill this boss. Now, Yunzin, we use Ring of Life because characters are on critical HP. That's when she starts thinking about Ring of Life. And she needs to heal before the enemy attacks because if you die, you lose all your buffs. Well, we got to the last turn. I don't know if we'll get to 1.5 minion because Jamie got inflicted with sleep. Yes, we'll probably not get that. We got close. I can assure you that we, you can get to 1.5 million with this. It depends on RNG. Still, even if you fail to get 1.5 million, you are contributing to killing this boss. The second strategy uses Tiger's Den as well. Then we have Coppelia here on the top. She will just use Punishing Combo. Then she will use Mirage Kick and then Key Blast and return to Mirage Kick. This works well because Key Blast is indirect. Then there is our Global Axie Media. I increase it both Trower to 13. I just want her to use Electric, Pierce, and Daringer. That will all, uh, work pretty well. Then there is Shendu. Shendu will use Gale Cycle to buff our Agility and then just keep using Woodstock. That's good enough for this fight. His passives are also pretty nice for here because he can just give someone an Agility buff and also an Attack boost. Then there's UDX Matriarch here, she will just use Shining Glory and Light Streak Lunge. She would get countered, but a good thing is that she also self-heals. We would just kind of compensate. On the front there is Princess White Rose Halloween version, and she just has Photosphere Shot, Shoko Balls, and Ray of Hope. You can also just get Photosphere Shot to 7, so that she only uses it once, but I'm using it as it is. Okay, the battle started, and one thing, if you are playing on Alto, you can stop in the middle of the fight, just to use overdrive. That will help you get more than 1.5 million damage. This fight's a little different. The characters here that we use will buff, at least on the start. Like, we have Agility buff from Shandu. We also have All Status buff with Match Arc. Shining Glory, pretty powerful. And we will debuff more times with Princess White Rose, with Coppelia, and with Emilia. He will just keep cleansing himself, but don't worry. Sometimes you will attack later, and you can still, well help reduce the damage a little. If your media can trigger Electric Pierce two times, it's very nice. Now we get counter with this Mirage Kick, but it's not a problem. His attack can stun, but with Princess White Rose here, it will hardly stun. We got a four people combo. We get more combos on the start because our agility is higher. But after that, it's not so common. See? The fire weakness. I really like when he does that. Now, uh, White Rose, you have to heal Matriarch. She didn't have enough VP, so only on the next turn. I mean, she would probably have to skip two turns, yes. At least she self heals. Not that it's gonna help her, but. She heals last, then she takes damage. Good thing that Princess White Rose's normal attack, she can 
buff her will and everyone else. It triggers her passive. Even counter triggers. That's very unique. It tracks you alive. That's nice. Use Ray of Hope before she dies, please. Well, it was not possible. But at least she attacked before dying. She's back. The healing is just so overpowered. Pretty close to one million. Which talk deals pretty good damage, to be honest. Now, Matrix is receiving more damage because she died, she lost all wheel buffs. It happens. Well, Coppella is dying. I believe we have... Uh, she's dead. <laughs> she's dead. I believe we have enough VP to use Ray of Hope. Yes, we do. At least. I think this time we do as much damage as we did in the first run, but someone died and there's some more energy in this fight as well. If you get more uh, double attacks with Emilia, it will be better. You can try the newest version of White Rose, but let me tell you, it didn't work so well for me. pretty close right so that's it guys you can see we got very close to 1.4 million i hope this video can help you in any way so that we can finish this bosses as soon as possible thanks for watching i hope to see you soon in the next video bye